through the absolute skin of their teeth, the Warriors escape with a win here against the Utah Jazz heading into the All-Star break. Um, that was not a good game. Not a good game. Um, not a good game. The defense in general was just horrendous, Hor- just horrifyingly bad. Uh, Colin Sexton went for 35 for the Jazz. Bless you, my cat sneezed. Keontae George dropped 33 with nine threes. Uh, Larry Markinen started off two of 16. They did a great job on him and then ended up finishing with 20 points. Six of 22 from the field, hit a couple threes. Uh, and John Collins almost had 20, finishing with 18. It was a rough, rough game. Jazz uh, shot 44, essentially 45% from three. Uh, they tied their cur- their franchise high in threes made in the game with 22. Um, rough, rough game, man. Rough game. Had another fourth quarter meltdown. Very nearly blew it. Uh, got outscored 35 to 20 in that fourth quarter. <sighs> rough one. Nearly gave up 40 points in the first quarter. 39. It was not a good one. Uh, Jonathan Kaminga had a very rough game. Had a horrendous turnover at the end of things. Uh, Only took six shots. Finished with 13 still. Went five of six. Three or four from the line. So solid there. Made some good plays offensively. Got on the glass a little bit. But defensively, Kaminga had a really rough night. Uh, Andrew Wiggins had a rough night defensively. However, he had a good game offensively. 19.7 19.7 of 12 from the field, 3 of 4 from 3, 2 of 2 from the line, and 7 boards. He was getting on the glass. Um, Clay, I genuinely just don't care about the scoring nights. Clay came off the bench for the first time since his rookie year uh, in this game and lit it up with 35 points on incredible uh, shooting splits 13 of 22 from the field, 7 of 13 from 3. Uh, I just don't care about the shooting splits because it was the, it was still the same Clay Thompson, just starting off the bench. That was it. Took the same shots, did the same thing, no different. Uh, filled with energy tonight. Congratulations, though. Uh, hit his uh, or hit fifteen thousand career points tonight. So that's awesome for him. Uh, don't want to sully that. That's a great milestone for him, and I'm I'm happy for him. But. Uh, as uh, regarding the remainder of the season and potentially the remainder of his tenure as a warrior, big nights like this just don't mean anything anymore. I, I really don't care. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything for me because last night completely different. Why didn't shoot well tonight? Very happy. Why he shot well tomorrow or the next game when the, like a week and a half after the All Star break. If you have if he has a rough night. Guess what? His energy is going to be bad and he's not going to play much defense. He's not going to get on the glass. He's not going to make the right plays. He's going to shoot horrifically next night. He'll shoot well and be super happy and excited because Clay is about Clay. Okay. As men, as much as he says he's about the Warriors as a team, he's dealing with his own thing. And I'm not saying that because I don't like Clay Thompson. I've talked ad nauseum about Clay uh, in a positive light because I think the dude's a good guy and, you know, he's in a very unfortunate situation. But uh, as far as his time with the Warriors goes, uh, at this point, I just the the big scoring nights do not mean much to me. Um, Steph did not have it going offensively tonight, but he made a lot of plays, um, had a lot of defensive breakdowns, and had some really rough turnovers. But at least he was making some plays. Good for him. I really like the game from Draymond. I think Draymond did as much as he could. Twenty three points, five boards. Five assists, four steals, two blocks, no turnovers, 9 of 14 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3. He played about as good a basketball game as he can possibly play, but it's it's just one of those things where they play at a team that was really big, and once again, Trace Jackson Davis plays 8 minutes, Kavon Looney manages to play 11 minutes, Dario manages to play 10 minutes, so that doesn't make any sense. Um, I just, like... 
I don't get why. I understand why Trace isn't playing like 40 minutes a night, but I'm dead serious. It's just him not starting games, or Kavan doesn't even start, but him not playing more than Kavan Looney just doesn't make any sense to me. When Trace was out there, he was 100% altering shots and changing everything at the rim. He was doing a great job. Even when the starters came in and Trace played a little bit longer, Trace was still playing good help defense. He was doing a good job at altering shots off of Dario's mistakes. Still only manages to get eight minutes. I don't know the logic there from Steve Kerr. It doesn't make sense. I've defended Steve Kerr. I just, the, the, the non, I, the refusal to play Trace over Kavan doesn't add up to me. It doesn't add up. Because at least with someone like Clay, where it's like, okay, we all have our issues with Clay. At least he can give you the occasional 35 point night on incredible shooting. With Kavan, it's like he might get you a few rebounds. He's not going to play great defense. He's going to get beat a lot. He's not going to play well in transition. You know, Kavan's pretty much a net zero offensively because he can't do much. He can't get over top of people. He got swatted like a child against Walker Kessler. That was kind of embarrassing. You know, I, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I get why they play Dario. I understand that because Dario provides spacing. He's a good playmaker. I understand why Dario plays. However, I'd like to see Dario more at the four than at center, which they played today with Trace at the five and then Dario at the four. But I, why Trace doesn't get minutes over Kavan boggles my mind i mean they played the whole first quarter where colin sexton had like five or six free throw attempts and trace didn't see the floor once and they were just running kavan out there why why kavan can't guard in the paint he isn't a rim protector what are we doing there i don't get it it makes no sense to me if you don't want to play trace why didn't she get a big at the deadline i don't understand it they're still running centers out there. They're not fully committing to this small ball thing. They're running bigs. So even though Steve's like, I love the small ball. I want to play small ball. We're going to start with small ball, small ball, this small ball, that you're still running your centers. You got three bigs on the bench, two of which you're giving consistent at least 20 total minutes per night. I don't understand why Trace is barely getting a lick of those minutes. He actually plays good basketball. Is he a world beater? No but he actually can protect the rim a bit. He can actually help there. Kavan can't. Dario can't. Dario played 10 minutes, still picked up two fouls, still did not do well defensively. Everyone was breaking the paint on him. It just it doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I will not understand that. I can't. It's not. You can't convince me it makes sense. Okay. 16 offensive rebounds for the Jazz. The Warriors, again, undersized, unable to box out, not getting defensive rebounds. 16 for Utah. In total, Warriors get out-rebounded in this game, 47-41. to 41. The only bright spot here, or the only two bright spots here, I'd say, are that the Warriors had 42 total assists in this game and only 13 turnovers. 13 turnovers in general is a good mark for the Warriors. Like under 15 is a good day as far as turnovers go for this team. But to also have 42 assists, that's awesome. The Warriors still scored 140 points, still shot 54% from the field, 48% from three, got to the line nearly 30 times. They did a good job offensively, but defensively, it just doesn't make sense. That fourth quarter, man, that fourth quarter against the Clippers, just it, it, they've gone right back into their old ways. You know, the point of attack defense, no longer there. Colin Sexton kicked the shit out of our point of attack defenders. You know, absolutely killed them. The switching, atrocious. How many blown coverages are we going to see? How many times are, is just a guard going to run right into the paint with nobody stopping them? Draymond has to leave his man to come help. There's no weak side help. And then it's just a layup or a foul. How many times do we have to see that before there's change? I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, I said many times, if the Warriors want to run small, the point of attack defense has to be next to perfect. 
because Draymond cannot come help because nobody else seems to understand how to help defend. No one else on the roster seems to know. The only guy who does is Trace Jackson Davis, who plays very good help defense. But guess what? Kavon fucking Looney's playing more than him. I don't get it. You know? I know, again, I've said, Trace doesn't have to play 48 minutes a night. He doesn't have to play 30 minutes a night. He doesn't have to play 25. But he should not be playing less than Kavon Looney in a game where the matchup is Walker Kessler, Lowry Markinen, and John Collins, Colin Sexton, Keontae George, Jordan Clarkson. What is a common theme amongst all those players? They get to the fucking rim. And guess who doesn't guard at the rim because he can't jump because he's essentially an elderly man? Kavon Looney. You know, I'm getting tired of it. I'm getting tired of it. I've said before, I've defended Steve Kerr. I still think Steve Kerr can be a good coach. But Jesus Christ on a fucking cracker. If I see Kevon Looney play more than Trace Jackson Davis again, I'm going to slam my head through the fucking window. All right? I can't take it. I don't want to see Kevon on the floor anymore. He's just not, he's not viable for this team anymore. He just isn't. You know? I can't take it. I can't take it. Huh. All right. Heart rate's coming back down. You know, I uploaded a rant video earlier today. I'm doing the same tonight. The Warriors won. I said, let's not limp into the fucking All-Star game. Let's finish this on a good note. Let's win strong. Let's go into Utah and win the game on a high note. This is not a game to win on a high... They... Like, this close, this fucking close, a Colin Sexton 3 away from heading into overtime where the Warriors have been essentially 0 for on the road in overtime for the last, like, 7 years, you know? So, essentially, if history remains to be the same, the Warriors likely should be walking into the All-Star game on a two-game losing streak, both absolutely horrendous losses this i would qualify as a horrendous win nothing to be proud of absolutely nothing again don't care about clay thompson's good game i really don't you know jonathan kaminga continues to be inconsistent because he's a young guy i think he's a good player i think he's shown massive improvements i think it could still be a solid score but the defense is simply not that good it's not that good. He doesn't get it yet. It's not clicking yet. He has flashes, and then he has games again, like tonight, like last night, like multiple games on that road trip where it's just ugly. He's getting beat by everyone. Nobody is. He can stop no one. I don't get it, you know? Like, you're 6'8". Come on, dude. You got a long wingspan. You're athletic as hell. How is Larry Markin beating you off the dribble? How are guys just collapsing you easily and getting to the rim? That should not be happening. You got to have a backbone out there. I don't know what the deal is. Andrew Wiggins, his defense has sort of fallen back down again. He had a fantastic road trip, an absolutely stellar road trip, like a good 10 game stretch where Andrew Wiggins was back to being an absolutely elite perimeter defender. The last two games have been rough defensively. He had a couple good moments. The rest have been kind of rough. He's not getting stops. Guys are just flying right by him, and he's kind of just standing there for a second as Draymond, again, a common theme, Draymond has to come over and try and help, in which case it's a tic-tac-toe pass, wide open make, because no one else is going to go help. (sighs) Long break ahead. All-star break is here. The Warriors need this. This needs to be a time for them to get their shit together. You know, even though this is not a win to be proud of, we'll count it as a get it how you can win, because at least you go into the all-star break winning the game. You know, at least you go in not with a negative record. That's a good thing. We'll be proud of that. You know, small victories, baby steps, we'll be proud of it. But I don't want to see any more Kavan. I want to see Trace play more. 
You're going to run Dario, whatever, but do not put him at the fucking five. You know, honestly, I, Dario doesn't even make sense on this team anymore because the Warriors have done such a good job at just playing fast and outpacing their opponents. So I don't, in the off season, as much as I've loved Dario and Dario was so crucial to the first half of this season when the Warriors offense was dog shit. I don't know if he even makes sense going forward. You know, I really don't. Sorry, I got an itch. Plus, oh God, Chris Paul is coming back. Chris Paul has played well as a Warrior, but guess what Chris Paul does? Slows the game down. Guess what the Warriors don't do well? Win while playing slow. You know? Where's Lester's minutes going to go? Is he... Is, is, I, Oh, I don't like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not excited about post all-star break. Frankly, I'm, I'm honestly nervous. I think I know where this is going and I don't want to fucking see it. So you guys can enjoy it. I'm going to panic internally and, you know, be as neurotic as possible and probably watch some, some wrestling, you know, to cure my mind because I am. Done with basketball. I'm not watching anything All-Star. I'm done with basketball for like a week. I need to chill. I need to take a break from this shit. I can't do it. The Warriors are bringing too much stress again. Oh, okay. We're good. We're good. Rant's over. Whew. If you like the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think, Warriors fans. Am I overreacting? I tend to do that a lot, but I come off of new information. So every game, it's like a new person. You know, it's fun right? ton of personalities coming out. So yeah, let me know what you think. If you uh, enjoy the content, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Podcast will probably happen at some point this weekend. Um, if not early next week, I am going to be uploading trade deadline, post trade deadline stuff uh, in the coming day or two. So be on the lookout for that. Um, with that being said, have a good rest of your week, weekend, all-star break, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Peace.